Now, John Debar, uh, as you just heard our correspondence uh, our report, uh, I don't know what the thing is with this uh, Shifa Hospital because uh, we have reports that uh, people, even patients, are uh, dragged from the hospital onto the street and nobody can uh, approach the, the place uh, like our uh, correspondents said they, they shoot at you. They have snipers, they have others, they shoot at you. So what's the thing with this hospital? Because Hamas is saying, okay, the UN, send a delegation and see for yourself, check everything out. There is nobody there hiding. Uh, first of all, in terms of international organizations, the World Health Organization verified more than 250 attacks on the healthcare system in Gaza and the West Bank over the past 30 days. 250. 50. Mm -hmm. you know, this is part of the infrastructure, necessary infrastructure for humans to, you know, live somewhere, to live. And there has been a system, you know, a systematic destruction of that infrastructure, cutting off water, cutting off medicine. You know, a lot of these things, by the way, have been cut off since 2007. Um, mm -hmm. And some people have been even executed on the high seas outside of anyone's territorial uh, jurisdiction for trying to deliver medicine, uh, food, coloring books for children, things like that. Um, this is an extermination. I mean, it's not, it's, it's, it's not even subtle. And legally, that constitutes genocide. Um, <clears throat> there was a member of the uh, State Department press corps this past week uh, who Sam, uh, raised a question uh, with the spokesperson uh, for, for the State Department, um, pointing out uh, that uh, uh, Francis Boyle, who is an attorney out at the University of Chicago Law School, famously uh, was uh, involved in war crimes trials regarding Yugoslavia, Bosnia, Herz Herzegovina, etc. He's looking at this, saying that um, you know the hardest uh, part of proving a case of genocide uh, is the intent, and here the intent has been declared to do this. Certainly, the fact pattern also is not subtle with respect to intent. When you blow up people's houses, when you drive them from where they are to an escape route and you shoot uh, missiles at them as they escape, when you blow up their hospitals in case some of them survive and get dragged off to be you know, treated, um, when you starve people of water and electricity and all of these other necessities, the, the, you can't interpret what's going on any other way. And, and so uh, th this uh, person, you know, this media person at the press, uh, you know, the presser for the State Department this past week mm -hmm. uh, said he, he pointed to uh, my, what Michael Ratner had said before he passed back in 2014 when Israel killed 2,000 people, only 2,000 people in Gaza in, in that round, mm -hmm. um, that, that uh, this should go in front of the ICJ. And people have called for this for some nation somewhere to file a petition with the International Court of Justice, to have these people here in the U.S., including in the State Department, which is what the spokesperson was being asked about, in the mm -hmm. U.S. government and in the governments of the EU and elsewhere that are funding and arming and, and providing material even after the declared intent, in essence, to commit genocide, in fact, to commit genocide, that these people are all culpable legally and that someone should be standing in front of a judge somewhere answering for it. And yet no one is doing a thing about it. I, I don't know if there's any other historical precedent for that other than the U.S. and the European countries refusing to allow Jews into their country to escape from Hitler when he was doing the same thing to Jews in Europe. Mm -hmm. That John, was supposed to be the great failure of our civilization, and yet it's happening right in front of our eyes and no one's lifted a finger. Exactly, unfortunately. Don, uh, the White House is saying that uh, we don't want to see what's happening in Gaza. Why should hospitals be hit? And uh, then they, this is the, you know, what is called as hellfire missiles. They are used, they are made in the USA. And the Israeli regime has used it to hit this Shifa hospital that we're discussing. All the ICU patients have died. A couple of kids uh, uh, in incubators uh, before they were born properly into this world, they, they died. And also lots of others. And the U.S. made weaponry, the U.S. is giving Israel arms, money, funding, even military advice and command, and they say, hey, don't do that. You know, your kid somehow scrapes up a BB gun 
and is caught firing it out of the bedroom window upstairs and hits a car, a tire, and causes a minor accident. And so you take the gun away from your kid, you try to impart some wisdom to this child that you don't, why you don't do that, maybe a little psychological evaluation about why you're hostile, and, and maybe the child's behavior changes. Then you buy a, mach a machine gun. Mm. That's what's going on here. Only they're Hellfire missiles. Machine guns were long ago. I see. And uh, in terms of uh, captives, uh, Don, the uh, U.S. is saying that uh, officials are talking uh, together with Qatar. They're talking to Israeli officials and, uh, to actually secure the release of the uh, captives. Uh, do they really care about this? And uh, do they want really this happen? Because in return, resistance fighters are asking for the release of uh, 5,000, 6,000 uh, Palestinians uh, held in Israeli jails, and some of them, uh, based on this administrative detention thing, which is actually they have no charges against them, but they're being held there. I mean, you know, the nature of, of the Israeli state and its relationship to the Palestinian people is no secret. It's been on exhibit since 1948. The, the you know the function of the government there is to seize as much land as possible to be settled by European and American settlers in essence the fact that they're Jewish is a cover for this but really this is the same thing that went on for three four hundred years since Christopher Columbus got his three little boats together and started sailing the ocean blue um, it's land theft and genocide it's it's the you know it's the metal it's the um, bread and butter of Western civilization, to use that term. Um, the people who are in, in these jails, you can see the same war that's conducted against poor people in the United States, which has more people in prison, lots of them not charged either, waiting charges for months and sometimes years, even in New York City. This is just one of the you know, tools in the toolbox of, of Western you know, empire. And uh, I don't know how you rest people out, you know, and find some justice for them with, without, you know, in, in a situation like that, uh, without military action. And, and, and people have to understand something, too, when they're looking at all of this. Hamas is the elected government uh, of uh, Gaza, okay? The land on which that October 7th, you know, attack, quote unquote, took place is actually land that belongs to Gaza. And it's being illegally occupied. And some of the people who lived there that were driven from it were murdered because the taking was illegal. And the remainder of those people were trespassing on land that was stolen as a consequence of felony murder. So when the government of, Hamas, of uh, Gaza, which is Hamas, executes an action to recover the land and to expel people who were trespassing and who, who were placed there by people who murdered and drove out illegally the owners of that land, you have to look at it in the context of a police action and not terrorism. Right. And uh, <clears throat> Don, as you are aware, U.S. bases are uh, being hit. They're being targeted in Iraq and in Syria, as well as, of course, uh, Israeli uh, targets on the Lebanese border and elsewhere. So speaking of the U.S. bases that are being hit by resistance fighters from Yemen, from Iraq, from elsewhere, and we have American people making their voices heard. They are opposing this Israeli genocide of the Palestinians. So what is it that keeps White House officials, you know, there insisting uh, and going on with this actually support, the unflinching support that they have for this Tel Aviv regime? Well, I mean, the, the support has been there since the installation of the regime on Palestine in 1948. The, the, the Harry Truman was very actively involved in that. It was one of his pet projects. He's not around to ask. Well, if we asked him that, and asked him a few other things, like why did you set up the CIA? Why did you drop atomic bombs on two Japanese cities when the war was pretty much over? He's got a lot to answer for historically, and somewhere hopefully he's shoveling coal working out the answer. Um, 
the U.S. government uh, is uh, has been the members of the U.S. government, the elected officials have been terrorized for many years by APAC and, and other organizations uh, that fund their campaigns and successfully fund uh, opponents' campaigns when people don't put up. Cynthia McKinney is a perfect example. She was a member of Congress for 12 years um, in two separate occasions because the state she was in allowed uh, crossovers and primaries. Um, that There was a basically an active uh, collaboration between the Republicans in the state of Georgia, where she was based, uh, and the, the national Democratic leadership to have her removed by throwing Republican support in the Democratic primary to an opponent that was placed there and funded by the national Democratic Party leadership. This was because uh, of two primary reasons. Number one, uh, there's an oath that she uh, was asked to sign, that apparently every member of Congress is asked to sign, that pledges uh, essentially allegiance to Israel. This is in direct violation, of course, of the oath of office uh, for someone holding an office in the United States, uh, but that Israel would be looked at as, you know, the only democracy in the Middle East and our, you know, most important ally. And she refused to sign that, and, and she began of uh, suffering attacks almost immediately in a coordinated fashion. And the other was uh, her suggestion um, that uh, George Bush sat on his hands uh, during 9-11 and that, so that was something that needed to be investigated. Um, in Congress, you, you saw an, you know, an example of how someone who speaks out of turn uh, on the question of Israel uh, is treated. Uh, we saw, uh, you know, what, I forgot what the vote was, like 428 to 2 to uh, condemn one member of Congress because she suggested that Palestinians might be human beings worthy of being treated that way legally and uh, by you know the rest of the world. Uh, this political culture here uh, is one that is completely dominated by you know an official ideology of if not subservience to then a shoulder to shoulder alliance with Israel. Practically speaking, Israel is the local uh, administration of the global empire that's you know situated uh, based in Washington, New York, Langley, wherever they hide out underground, and um, mm -hmm. that's that's what you're seeing when you see these different uh, you know ex exhibits of this subservience. And Don, we have one minute, and uh, my last question for you: How long do you anticipate this war on Gaza to go on? As long as we let it or until they exterminate the Palestinians, um, if the people of the region start fighting back. By the way, there is an actual regional war already going on. Israel's been bombing Syria and uh, parts of Iraq and other spots outside of uh, and uh, Lebanon um, and uh, other parts outside of the territorial area of Israel or Palestine. Um, and. Uh, you know, the people in that region that are watching their governments sit on their hands and not strike back are going to take power in some place. We're seeing that. That's pretty much what we're seeing in Iraq, for example. We may well see that in Saudi Arabia, too. Saudi Arabia has spent more money on their military annually than Russia up until the war last year with Russia. They have plenty of resources available to make right. Israel stop. And the United States is not in a position to push Saudi Arabia around because they need the oil. So I don't know why they're not acting, but their people are asking that same question, and they may take the initiative.